Let me give you a little demo on something called ambient occlusion. So I've got a couple of scenes set up here that I'm going to go through uh, to demo this feature with. Now this first scene is a box that I've deleted one polygon from. Now I'm going to zoom in and we're going to pretend this box is the corner of a room. Let me render this out and you'll see you can kind of make out the corners of a room and it's a little bland looking. So what I'm going to do to give this a little more depth is turn on some ambient occlusion. And you can do that by going under your render settings and you can add it in as an effect. So if I click on the word effect down here, I can turn on ambient occlusion. And for the most part, you don't really have to tinker with a lot of the settings in here. If anything, you might just want to play a little bit with this gradient. I'll show you what that does in a minute. But now that I have that on, let me just close this dialog and let me re-render this box. Okay, it's really subtle, but it's kind of an important change that's happened here. Here's my original uh, sort of interior of my room. It's a little kind of tough to make out what's happening there uh, in terms of you know the corners and everything. I'm not sure if I'm looking at the inside of a room or possibly uh, if you look at it in a different perspective it could be the outside of a cube. Uh, but the corners here are just a little bare. They're kind of plain. And when I render it with ambient occlusion you see you get some very subtle shadowing going on in the corners here. You get a little sense of depth and I guarantee you right now if you go into any room, the room you're sitting in right now, take a look at the corners. You're gonna see all subtle shadows hanging out where the walls intersect one another and where they intersect the ceiling. So without having to get into any form of actual lighting, if you turn on the ambient occlusion, you'll get a better sense of depth in the scene. The objects will get a little bit of self-shading going on there. Let's try it with something else. I'm going to go to another scene I have set up here. Again, a very simple object just kind of like a funny little cube with a couple of bevels on it. Let's render it out. There it is. It's a little tough to kind of make out some of the details on certain angles here because they're so flat in color. Let me go turn on my ambient occlusion. Just go under effect, activate it for this scene, and let's re-render that. Here's the before. Here's the after. Again, a nice little sense of self-shading going on here. It gives it a little more depth to the uh, to the object. Now you'll notice the shading is probably going to be a little noisy and you can assist with that noise by turning up your anti-aliasing. So if I go back under my render settings I can go to anti-aliasing, go to best, maybe do a two to four sample here, render it out. It's going to take a little longer to render but it won't quite be as noisy. So here it is before, here it is after, before, after, and the noise softens up. It dithers out a little nicer there. All right, show you one other scene. Go back under window here, go to my third scene. I got a bunch of primitives. Let's render that out. Oops, you know, let me stop that render for a minute. I think the ambient occlusion was already turned on in that scene. Let's delete it. Oh, interesting. If you don't want the ambient occlusion, you can uncheck it to mute it, but keep it basically on with the settings but you can temporarily turn it off by unchecking it or if you don't want it all together you can click on it and just hit your delete key and get rid of it. So let me render this once without it and that's the scene just a handful of primitives and let's go turn it on or add it in I should say. Render it out and again you get a better sense of some shading where the primitives touch the ground plane. You get a little bit of shading in there. A little bit of shading on the side of the primitives where it hits the ground plane. Here it is before without it. Here it is with it. It's a nice little detail to add into your renderings if you're not incorporating any lighting. This is kind of like a poor man's lighting situation. So we haven't actually activated any 3D lighting at the moment. We're just turning on ambient occlusion. And one little thing to note, look at this cylinder right here. The shadow is just below it versus kind of hugging up against it, which gives me the sense that this object is floating a little bit above the ground plane, which it is. Whoops, I got some objects going through the ground plane. Ignore those. Um, but the cylinder here is floating a little bit, and you get that sense when you render it out, and you get that subtle, subtle shadow underneath the bottom there. 
Now just one quick look at these settings. It's not a whole lot to tinker with. Let me go back to that first scene with the wall. Let's render that out. Okay, and again, I got some nice little shading going on here. I, I, I actually kind of dig it like that, but if I wanted to edit it, I could bring up my render settings. And a couple of things you can tinker with. This gradient represents the darkest part of the shadow and essentially the lightest part of the shadow. So when this gets generated, the darkest part of the shadow way here in the corner is going to be black, and then it feathers off into a lighter color. It basically almost goes... Um, it's almost like a black to a transparency, so to speak. So if I were to take this black color on the gradient, double click it, I don't know how obvious this is gonna be just yet, but let's say I made it like um, a little bit of gray, like a medium gray. Let's render this out again. It's, it's incredibly subtle, but the shadow, the darkest parts of the shadow have lightened up a little bit. It's still here a little bit, but it's really, really subtle. And it, I mean, it was really kind of subtle to begin with, but if you do the ambient occlusion and you feel like some of the shadows are a little darker than, than maybe you, what you want, you can edit those pretty easily by changing the color on this gradient. Just go from black to a, a, a medium to dark gray and that will lighten the shadows. You can also control the density of the shadows by moving the, the little house here down the gradient line. If I drag this, more this way, it's going to put a greater emphasis on the shadow. So if I render that out, the shadows get really kind of deep and, and in this case kind of nasty looking. So I'm just going to back that up. So really, you know, most of the time I simply turn it on and really just leave it alone. Once in a while I'll go ahead and lighten up the shadow a little bit, but usually for the most part you can just let it be. One other quick note, I don't know if you noticed this or not, but if you're playing with settings inside the render setting dialog and you find yourself going back and forth into these settings, you don't have to close the dialog. You don't have to close it and reopen it between renders. You can simply get it out of your way, click on your picture viewer, hit shift R, that will re-render with the current settings and then you can go right back to these settings and further tweak them so you don't actually have to keep closing it out. If it doesn't get in the way of what you need, you can actually leave it open, hit Shift R and, and generate another render. Okay, that's a very quick introduction to ambient occlusion. There's not a whole lot to it, but if you're not doing any other lighting in your scene, this is a great way to give a sense of depth, so give it a try.